After traveling through remote northern Kenya for almost two weeks, I decided I needed nature, animals, and the ocean breeze. So I found out about a budget safari and headed first to see some wildlife in the Masai Mara National Park, and then I flew to the coast to Lamu. Morning. On our first morning in the Maasai Mara, we got super, super early. We are hoping to see the Big Five, and if we're lucky, we get to see some of the big fish. In Africa, the Big Five are elephants, the African buffalo, leopards, lions, and rhinos. I heard that the leopards and rhinos are the hardest to see. On this budget safari, you're paired with other people. It's a great way to experience some of the magic of the land without having to pay the high price fares. Before I came to Kenya, I had no idea this option even existed. My timing was very lucky because I happened to be here during the Great Migration. The main part of the migration had already happened, but we were told that there were still animals left behind that were waiting to cross, and so we might have a chance to see it. Our driver, Alex, was informed of a cheetah sighting. And then Alex got word of a lion taking a break in the shade. Oh my gosh! This is the exact location where the Great Migration happens. Every year, over a million wildebeest and zebras attempt to cross through the hippo and crocodile-infested Mara River between Kenya and Tanzania. Oh, they turned back around. <laughs> we are literally trailing back and forth, back and forth this herd of wildebeest. We're waiting very patiently for them to cross. We're stalking them. They're moving and they stop. They're moving and they stop. They keep faking us out. <laughs> the excitement is building up. We have so many people waiting. Oh my gosh, there they go, there they go. Just as we thought we were going to be able to see them cross, at the last minute, they turned back around, and so we were done trying. So we headed on over to another location, and we got word that there was one of the hardest animals to see in the Big Five, the elusive leopard. So right behind me is one of the Big Five. It's a leopard, and he's way up in the tree, far away from us. Well, at least his tail's hanging. We finished our three days in the Maasai Mara National Park by stopping by a village of the Maasai tribe. That's your brother? I want him to learn English. So uh -huh. I'm very happy when he speaks with you. Yeah. So that I can feel happy. There were tons of tables outside filled with jewelry and artifacts that the Maasai had made. I was literally in heaven. 
Say hi. Awesome. It was at this point of the trip that I left the first group and joined another car who were continuing on for another day. <laughs> beautiful day, beautiful day. First, we headed to Lake Navisha, which is known for its huge hippopotamuses. And we even got to see a little baby. Rhinos behind us. So cool. So yesterday we left the Masai Mara Park, National Park, and today we headed to Lake Nakuru, which is another national park known for rhinos and flamingos. And already this morning we've seen many rhinos. So I finally have seen the big five. And I have a new friend, Jeff. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So happy nice, to be in your car. Yeah, hugging a nice girl here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My budget tour was coming to an end and I honestly can't recommend doing this tour enough. If you want to see the animals but you don't want to pay the big bucks, there is this option. I got to see all of the big five plus more for a few hundred dollars compared to several thousand. On the way back to Nairobi, we stopped at a market where you can buy locally made hand carved art and souvenirs. And it takes you four days to make one? Wow. To make wow. One day Everybody has like a different Sunday. job. Yeah, exactly. One person sands, one person carves, yeah, exactly. one person polishes. Yeah, exactly. And one sells. And one what? Sells. And one sells it? Yeah, it's a, it's a chain. It's a chain. Yeah. I stopped quickly in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. I used this as a hub, but didn't stay here long because the busy, crazy, big city life is not really my thing. But I did visit Kabera slum, which I posted in another video. I headed to the northern coast of Kenya for some beach, ocean breeze, and local life. Yes. A guy associated with my Airbnb met me at Manda Island Airport and we headed to Lamu Town. I just arrived from the airport and we catch a boat to the island of Lamu. Already an adventure. Lamu Archipelago consists of a few islands, and my plan was to visit Lamu Town, known for its ancient, still intact Swahili culture, Shela, and Manda Island. The only way to get from island to island in Lamu is by boat. This way. I am in Lamu, which is a small, quaint town or island on the northern coast of Kenya. The city is about 400 years old and they have still kept their traditional Swahili culture. There are no cars. There might be like four cars on the island. It's really cool. You'll see donkeys walking on the street, people riding donkeys, donkeys transporting goods. You see all along the water, these wooden dow boats with big sails. They use them for transportation and trading. They've been trading with the Middle East for centuries. They have a strong Muslim community here. You'll see tons of people dressed in their traditional style of clothing. They have a mixture of people of Arabs and Portuguese and Indians. Hi. People here are very friendly. I was told at first that not to come here and take pictures and video, but for the most part, I've been welcomed really neat place it has small narrow streets kind of reminds me of morocco and tall buildings which i found out that the idea behind this is to keep the buildings cool huh you nuru muhammad 
just walked up and um, she was curious about what I was doing. She's dressed in the typical Islamic wardrobe, which is wearing a niqab with only the eyes showing. Yes. <laughs> Before I decided to come to Lamu Town, I was reading all these blogs and talking to people and they said, don't go to Lamu Town. There's nothing there. Go on to Shela, which is where everyone hangs out for more of the relaxed, laid back boat lifestyle. But I just had a feeling that I needed to come here to experience some of the Swahili culture and local life. Town has over 3,000 donkeys. 3,000 donkeys in Lamu Town. They are so important to this community that they even have a donkey clinic. I'm with one of the blacksmiths of Lamu. He makes this fire in the ground and then heats up different types of metal to make the anchors for the dow boats and even metal doors for the homes. When you heat up the metal like this, you can bend it really easily. Jamba. Most of the buildings in Lamu Town are made from limestone and coral. I took a boat over to another part of Manda Island, which is still part of the Lamu Archipelago, to see how the coral bricks are made and see some of the local life on this part of the island. Oops. is very labor intensive from cutting it out of the earth to carrying it on top of their head it is not an easy job after loading the bricks onto the boat they are then sailed to its final destination Lamu town on this trip I learned an important lesson which I really already knew but it was confirmed again do not listen to what other people say and their opinions from going on a budget safari where most people say that's impossible to visiting Lamu town which most people said skip I'm so glad that I came here figured it out for myself and had these incredible experiences now off to another part of Lamu Shela and another coastal island called Malindi. Stay tuned. <laughs>